to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the Morning with Laura Styles and Rosenberg. Ebro in the Morning, Laura Styles uh, is with Baby Styles, Young Baby Light. Uh, there at the crib. We'll get a check in, I'm sure, at some point. And Rosenberg's here. And we got our brother Jumani Williams back on the program because we got to have some pre holiday COVID, pre holiday safety uh, talk about how things are going in New York City. He is the public advocate. Jumani Williams, thanks for coming back on the program. Peace and blessings, love and light. Thank you for having me again. Always yes, sir. A um, I don't know. Did you have a chance to see our conversation with Governor Cuomo? I did not. I wish I did. Uh, I, I would like you to watch that. We talked about the NYPD. We talked about COVID, obviously. We talked about his handling of COVID and what he learned about himself. I, I felt like it was a, a, a good um, eye-opening conversation. And, he's, and, and he was still, you know, we got into white supremacy and the NYPD and them endorsing Donald Trump, which he was uh, definitely on our side about that. Uh, but he was still his, you know, his Cuomo bring it on. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? What do you want to do? <laughs> you know, self. So I want you to check that out. Also, we've been having some conversations with de Blasio, too, who uh, I think has been um, still very mired by, you know, not picking a side or picking the side that everybody wants him to pick when they want him to pick it with regard to COVID. How do you feel about de Blasio these days, Jamon? Uh, it's terrible leadership, man. It's all, I mean... It's it's just horrible. I don't, I I really try to figure out what he's doing and why. When it comes to this school situation, first of all, people get lost on this three percent. This three percent he just made up so he could sell a reopening plan that absolutely nobody wanted. We wait, wait, knew. slow down. So, so the schools were one of the some of the safest places with the lowest uh, cases of COVID. Yes. Uh yes. Based on the testing that they did, we're not sure they tested properly. But yes, that the answer to that is yes. Based on the information that was available. Yes. But still, people get lost in that. It's not just about uh, those tests. It's also about what resources do we have and how do we spread them out? He spread it to the thinnest possible. So much so, my stepdaughter right now, who was fine, she paid remote the whole time, is getting an entire new uh, class right now. There's still 60,000 students who don't have uh, tablets for remote learning. Still so many that don't have proper Wi-Fi. Only about 100,000 a day were sending their kids to school. There's 1.2 million students in the school. This is a failure of epic proportions. And to hear him repeat, oh, no one could have anticipated this. Well, everybody anticipated. We knew the schools, if we not tried to open wide open, we were going to have to close partial or completely at some point as we got into the second wave. This was completely preventable. And it's just, it's just, it's remarkable the lack so, of leadership. I so, think, where are things at right now, with regard well, to schools? We shut them down with no plan. We said at least have a plan. Open the rec centers so that children who have, are in the most need, uh, children with disabilities, uh, low-income students, uh, p parents who also need to send their kids to school so they can go to work, they can learn in a remote space with their young people. Said at least have a plan in place. No plan. Within 17 days. I mean, sorry, 17 hours, you tell people that they have to find child care. It's just, it's just absurd. So we're hoping now that the reopening plan that put, gets put in place finally uh, is similar to what many of us have been asking for way back in July. And I want to shout out the Mark Traeger, the education chair, because we've been basically aligned with this from the beginning. And unfortunately, the only people who wouldn't listen were the mayor and it seems the, the chancellor. And and was it and what do you think is the the disconnect? Is it is it that is this a no win situation because there's going to be people who are if you're the mayor, there's going to be people who are pissed off no matter what you do on either side or what, what, what would you what do you think could have preempted all this? Because I feel like at every turn, even when there's successes, people are still mad with, at the mayor. Because let me just say this in terms of your no win uh, uh a question there are only bad options that's all we got during this COVID. you as a leader need to be able to articulate why you're choosing the best of the bad options this man chooses the worst of the bad options and so even when he has his quote unquote win okay let everyone have a tablet he doesn't fulfill that well okay let's open up the rec centers he doesn't expand it so he can't even get out of his own way what we said at the beginning was don't swing open 
the largest school system in, in the country. Have a phased in approach using science, equity, and safety. Focus on remote learning. You can't put all your resources in opening a school that you don't need to open. So focus on remote so that everybody can have a tablet. Everybody now, can have Wi-Fi. Even even because if parents, open. even if parents voted to have the schools open. That was a sham. He said that 85% of parents were gonna come. 100,000 parents a day out of 1.2 million. The question he asked the parents was, do you want in-person learning? Who the hell doesn't want in-person learning? Of course you want in-person so learning. So they asked the wrong question. Of course they asked. They asked the question presupposing what they wanted already. And this is the result that we have. So everybody wants in-person learning, but it's not the best that we can do. If he had told parents, look, the way we're gonna be testing ventilation is with toilet paper and a stick. Nobody would have said that they wanted this. And we kept telling the mayor, this is not going to work. Wait, Here what do you mean plan. toilet paper and a stick? They're walking around with toilet paper and a stick, checking the ventilation. That was their testing system uh, when they were about to reopen. This is this is what I'm telling you. They were tremendously ill-prepared. And all of this was preventable. I think the mayor wanted to be the, the shiny toy person nationally. Oh, look what we did. We opened up the schools. That was the problem. Everyone knows uh, that uh, this was uh, a difficult thing to do, and everyone knows that we only have bad options. And so people are focused on this three percent. And I need to say it again: that was made up so he can sell this plan to the unions. And three uh, percent infection rate. When you say three percent, that's the infection rate. Infection rate. Yeah, that's right. just. Oh, I want to sell this plan. Nobody wants it. I wish the UFT did not agree. I think it was the wrong thing at, at that moment in time. Um, and we knew we were going to get here. It's it's just we're in a, a state of chaos. And we haven't been properly resourced. So and how do you remove bureaucracy and all of this and just get the parents the support that their kids need? How do you how do you do that? What's crazy is the plans that we have uh, came from parents themselves, people on the ground. The mayor continually talks about the resilience, uh, but we want him to focus on the brilliance of people who are on the ground, who are doing this work. Dr. Celine Gounder was guiding us in our plans. She is now on President-elect Biden's task force on coronavirus. So these are the people that we were listening to because we're not experts. The mayor seems to be just listening to himself and his team. Uh, so we now have to reset, just completely reset, and hopefully do the reopening plan that we mentioned, which is based on safety, equity, and science. Get the assistance of the people who need it in the most when we reopen. Focus on getting those tablets and Wi-Fi and just have a phase reopen. That's all. It so, was actually so simple. Let, people put it. Let me break it down, and then we'll transition off this. So you're okay from the information because you're closer than this to me or Rosenberg. So I'm only I'm asking you, and then when we ask the Blasio, we can only we can only ask the questions. Mm -hmm. If kids have Wi-Fi support and tablets, you feel good though about the testing that's been happening with the kids. Well, D75 uh, students, which are students primarily who have who need additional uh, learning assistance, my understanding is they weren't being tested at all. And so we do have some concern about the testing. Uh, the testing is voluntary, uh, so I'm not even sure if it's capturing everything. Got but it, it does that by itself. Uh, it seems to be okay. We're seeing uh, some of those across the the, the world as well. Uh, schools uh, being uh, the safest, uh, but. The remote learning, I just need you to understand, wasn't everybody's plan. Even the mayor's hybrid plan included remote. Right. And so if you have that in everybody's plan, why would you not uh, appropriately resource it? And then you decided to split teachers. Teachers got in-person and remote. There were not enough teachers. There were uh, students that were packed in, in remote. It's like, I can't tell you how chaotic it was and unnecessarily. He's going to tell you no one... Uh, no one could have foreseen this. Everybody foresaw it. He tried to say me and uh, Councilman Traeger were professional critics, which was interesting because uh, he gave us a lot to criticize. And he was a public advocate before, criticized Mayor Bloomberg way more than we're doing now. But right now, we have to point out a plan that works. And my my guess is, at this point, he's finally going to start to listen. Hopefully. So, so Jamani, moving on to Thanksgiving, um, you are the public advocate. What is your message to people about Thanksgiving? Obviously, we know you're going to say to take care, be careful, et cetera. But what, basically, what do you think people are able to do? What 
Can they have family who's tested come over? What's your general messaging to how people should be celebrating this Thursday? Uh, and by the way, uh, we didn't we didn't get to the governor, but the governor's mixed messages are reminiscent of what we saw early on and also don't help our situation. So that's a whole nother conversation. You know, when it comes to Thanksgiving, with, with all of these things, the messaging is important. The messaging should be don't travel. Just have your nuclear family. Everybody should have that messaging from the White House all the way down. The likelihood is that as human beings, not everybody's going to listen. Uh, we know that. What we want to do is increase the compliance. And so that means the leadership should be on the same accord. So when you see council members and leaders posting that they're publicly going to have people over to their home, that doesn't help. Who did that? And that's Councilmember Joe Borelli, man, from Staten Island, one of the highest rates. Now, Double come down. on, Staten Island, that, they, they might as well be in, in North Dakota. They're yeah, but not, he's bugging. No, he is bugging. Then, but you Cuomo also was even like, yo, Cuomo was even like, yo, Staten Island's a problem. They are. They are. But you had Democratic leaders that were holding events, hosting events without masks, all kind of stuff going on. And this is a problem. Like... You can't, we have to model, if you're in the public eye, we have to model behavior because people are going to go awry anyway, but we need to increase compliance. So the message from everybody, Democrat, Republican, leadership should be don't travel. Don't be indoors with people that you don't really know, especially around the holiday season. We saw many people in the airports this past week traveling. Um, we see rallies. We saw a huge wedding here in New York City, like I said, we saw events. It's, it's madness that people are still going out, uh, even this pandemic, even though this pandemic is increasing. And I will say that is primarily responsibility out of the White House and the Republican leadership that refuse to believe that the sun rises as a scientific fact. Uh, but also there are Democrats uh, who need to show better leadership and they need to uh, be uh, act more boldly. If you're saying that we have to have a 10 p.m. curfew, that makes no sense. That means we have to do something and you're not doing it like we did early on. It was probably time to close indoor. Um, it was time to close uh, indoor uh, dining. If you're saying that we're probably going to be locked down uh, by December 1st, we're probably saying uh, that we have to lock down now. All we're doing is giving time for this virus to spread, which is what we did in February, March. And we're making the pain of having to close these things down much longer. What we need is some support for these businesses from the federal government and from the state and the city, some of which the governor himself is blocking. So wait on that, because we spoke to Cuomo and asked him about this money. And he said there's no way to get out of the situation where without money coming from the federal government. There's no way out. You're telling me that the state has money right now that could go to people to help ease what they're going through? The governor is correct in saying that we are in a whole lot of trouble without federal funds. There's just no way around it. That doesn't mean you don't use the tools that you have. He has the tools right now, and he seems to be the only one blocking raising revenue simply from billionaires and millionaires. Got he it. just doesn't want to do it. Um, and that's that whole he's afraid they're going to move out of the state if, if he taxes them. We always seem to be more afraid of the billionaires and millionaires than the people who are actually losing their lives on the ground, who don't have health, who don't have, uh, who don't have health services, who don't have food. Yesterday, as I drove, I rode my bike in Brooklyn and all around, I didn't know which lines were longer, people getting COVID tested or the food pantry. We need to be worried about all of New York City. He's also uh, preventing New York City uh, from some long-term borrowing, which is a need. The mayor is correct on this. We need to have some long-term borrowing. They can put some things in place to make sure it's responsible. But those two things will help tremendously and it's not the federal government that's blocking that. It's Andrew Cuomo. And why would he block New York City from getting funding? Is that a political move? What's a, I, don't, I don't know enough to even understand. Is he blocking that? Because if New York City goes out and gets money without the state, then it create. I don't, I don't understand. What am I so, missing? Um, well, one, billionaires and millionaires are his donors. So he doesn't want to uh, continue taxing his donors. So we know that. Uh, with the long-term borrowing, it's probably just this continuous sparring that he has with the with the mayor, which is just just absurd. To the to the state's credit, there is some concern about this administration. I don't believe that the mayor 
is the best manager messenger as a steward for New York, so I can understand that. And so I'm into putting some controls in place. I don't know if we need a uh, financial control board, but there should be some controls in place so we don't spend it all willy nilly. So he's correct about that. Uh, but I believe most of this is politics. They're also trying to hang on uh, to see what the Congress can do, which we should, but we can't, the more we wait to even put a plan out, the worse it is, uh, is for our businesses. Is it, has there been success? You pointed out earlier uh, the reluctancy to just like do these blanket shutdowns of restaurants or whatever. Has there been success when they've hyper-targeted zip codes that have shown infection rates and they've gotten things under control? Is that a better way to go about things than just a blanket? I was into that. I was into the micro-targeting. Uh, hopefully we can, we can still continue, continue to do that. We did see some success uh, in the micro-targeting. Uh, but it seems to be uh, getting out of control whether the micro is becoming macro. macro yeah. And, you know, even if we didn't shut down right away, I get it. But a 10 p.m. curfew does nothing. The virus doesn't understand the curfew. That was just that was just ridiculous. At that point, you should have said, OK, we're at least going to shut down indoor dining. Indoor dining in particular seems to be where a lot of this stuff. I feel like the 10 p.m. Yeah, curfew was aimed at clubs, though, and bars that were people was hanging out late. But it doesn't make any sense. We still see the numbers going up. Indoor dining seems to be where it is, and that includes bars. Like, you just have to, sh at some point, start shutting things down, even if you don't want to go all the way. Indoor dining is where we should aim, so we can, we can you know, test that. If that doesn't work, then we got to move to a, a bigger shutdown. But we have to move quickly. If you're telling people, and now they're starting to, that we may be in a shutdown by December 1st, we need to move. You're just allowing time for the virus to spread. And then when we have to shut down, we just have to, we're going to do it for a longer time period. That aggravates everyone, you know, and, and, but we ourselves have to do better. We saw parties, we saw weddings. I see them on Instagram, people out there popping champagne inside. Like it's, it's craziness. We ourselves as well have to do better, but that the lack of messaging together, like with the mayor and the governor, sometimes, uh, sometimes make the, make that worse. And we're seeing the same errors we saw between these two men, February, March, as we're doing now, it's a second wave. My wish is they would have learned some lessons by now. Jermani Williams, he's the public advocate. Thank you for your time today. Is there any last words you want to get out to people? The holidays, listen, um, I've been telling people, we just got to, I know it sucks. You know, this season is the season everybody looks forward to. More time off, more time with family, more toys, more hanging out, more parties, you know. People come home from school, et cetera, et cetera. This is that season. But we're going to have to hold the L this year. Like, it's yeah, just, it is what it is. We're just going to have to hold fact. the L and be like, yo, this is trash. That's it. Yeah, it's fact. It's a, it's a fact. I mean, it's, it is what it is, man. I, I mean, I just, it's, we're, in, we're in bad shape. As I said, we only have the best of bad options. Don't choose the worst of bad options. It's, there's a bunch of albums out. I saw uh, Black on Purpose. You know, we got that yeah, Buster Rhymes. Yeah, Remy. Yeah, that, yeah. Yo, yo, your man Jamani, like, yo, put your headphones on and stay in the room. Let's do that. That's exactly right. <laughs> that's right. That's right, man. Do that because we can't, we can't do what we normally do. That is the main message. Let's just get through this. We see the vaccines on the way, man. It's, it's coming. Let's just let's hold on because what you're doing is harming your family and harming your neighbors, even if you can't see in that moment of time. That's what's like. If buildings were falling all over the place, people would be reacting different, but they can't see this. And they don't know that they're passing it on. So they think they're good. And that's dangerous. And this is why the messaging is so important. And when it's not coming cohesively, um, it's a problem. It, it makes it worse. Jamani Williams, thank you for your time, man. Thanks, Happy Jumani. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Thank you for coming by. Peace, and love, and light. All right, Happy man. We'll talk to you soon. Peace. All right, man.